Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com and this is part 17 of Learn Lightroom 5 and in this episode we're going to talk about snapshots, collections, stacking, and virtual copies. And this is a request to Stan. He emailed me wondering about these topics and he asked me if I could do a video on it. So if you guys have anything you'd like to know about Lightroom, email me at Tony at AnthonyMorganti.com and if I can, I'll do a video on whatever you want to know. Um, before I get into this though, if you guys could do me a favor and if you could subscribe to my YouTube channel and like and share the videos, I'd really appreciate that. Alright, the first thing we're going to talk about is snapshots. And snapshots are a great way is if you processed a photo to an extent and you're not sure you like it or you wanted to try some other things on it but you didn't want to lose where you were you could create a snapshot and it will freeze that photo in that uh, point in time and you could do a bunch more changes to it and you could come back to it and just click on the snapshot and you're back where you uh, we you know where you started I guess where you started the snapshot I should say so what we'll do is um, this photo here I processed it to a point and I'm thinking, well, I kind of like this, but I wonder what it looks like in black and white, let's say. Well, before I go and just make a black and white photograph, I'm going to save this to a snapshot. You go on the left panel, and you have snapshots. Click the plus uh, sign right there, and it will ask you to name it. It defaults with the date and time. You could leave that if you want, but I'm going to call this color. And I'm going to click Create. Now, I created a snapshot of this photo at this exact moment and I called it color. Now I'm going to process it. I want it black and white. So I'm going to click on the black and white thing here. So now I made it black and white and the graduated filter is a little light. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to bring the exposure down a little bit. And that's it for the sake of time. That's all I'll do. Now this is my black and white version. I'm going to create another snapshot. I'll hit plus and I'm going to call this one black and white. Now I have two snapshots. And I could go back and let's say, well, I didn't really like that color one. Let's go back to the, the or the black and white one. I go back to the color one there. Now I have it in color and I could do now some modifications to this one. That's I'm going to add a brush stroke and I'm going to make an exposure adjustment on the brush. I'm going to add this like right here like that. And all right, that's good for the sake of time again. I'm going to make another snapshot and I'm going to call this one color 2. So what you could do is you could make a lot of different go different directions with your modifications and you could make uh, um, you know black and white versions, different types of color versions, try different things out and so you don't lose your point in time you could create a snapshot by hitting this plus sign and you could go back to any of your previous um, snapshots by just uh, clicking on them. And if you decide, well, you know, I didn't really like that second color one, so I'm going to hit the minus sign and you'll actually delete the snapshot. Now it's gone forever. Um, so that's snapshots. Um, thing that's kind of similar to snapshots in a way is virtual copy. And it is exactly what it says. It doesn't make a copy of the file on your hard drive. It just makes uh, like a thumbnail copy of it in Lightroom then we'll have two interpretations on how to process that photograph. Um, so let me show you with this end photo because it's easier on the end. Um, you just highlight the photo you want to make the virtual copy of. You could right click right on the thumbnail and you could go up to create virtual copy or you could go up to the main menu and go to photo create virtual copy. And what it will do is it, it creates a copy of the photo and will highlight it and select it. And the virtual copy, you notice the corner is folded up. That indicates that this is the virtual copy. Also, you look up here on the name and it says copy one. If I went back to the original photo, you'll see it does not say copy. Now what you could do with your virtual copy, as I mentioned, it's still one file on your disk, so it's not taking up any more space, but you could um, do some um, modifications to this. I'll make this one black and white. So my virtual copy is now black and white, but the original is still the same. So you could do that too. You can make a virtual copy of your image. You can make a lot of virtual copies, just like you can make a lot of snapshots. And you could have different interpretations of the same image. 
Um, so that's snapshots and virtual copies. The next thing I'm going to talk about is collections. Um, collections are kind of like folders. On your hard drive you have a fold you have your folders and you might have a folder for flowers and you have a folder for you know landscapes or what, however you have it divided up. But what collections are they're kind of like uh, Lightroom's version of grouping photos together so you could either more easily find them or keep track of certain things. And let me show you. Um, I have, uh, let's say, this one, this one, oops, excuse me, that one. I'm going to hold the command key or control if you have a PC to select multiple files, and that one. And I want to add those to a collection. And you go up to where it says collections here, and I open the triangle. I have a lot of collections. I'm going to click the plus sign to create a new one. Right there, create collection. I'm going to name it. I'm going to name these um, beach. These are my favorite files from the beach, photos from the beach. I'm going to make sure that I have clicked include selected photos. You could actually just send virtual files, virtual copies into the collection if you want, but there really is no need for that and I'll show you why in a minute. Um, okay, now I created the beach uh, category and I have the three files in it. Now if I go back through my library module and I go back to my original folder, the, the files are still there. It didn't move them into the collection, it just added them to the collection. And the reason why you might want to use collection, let me give you an example. Let's say you're taking photographs for a stock photo agency, iStock Photo, and you have various, a big array of photos of different subjects. So let's say you have a bunch of photographs of Rome and you have a bunch of photographs of a waterfall near your house and you have some more photographs of some landscapes and then you have some photographs of business people and they're all in their respective folders on your hard drive. You want to keep track of what you sent to iStock Photo but you don't want to, it's hard, you know, it'd be a pain in the butt to go to the hard drive, find all those raw files and move them into a separate file or copy them into a separate file called iStock Photo. What you could do is you could create a collection called iStock Photo and you could simply add to the collection, let's say I want to add this black and white virtual copy. I want to add that one to my collection uh, called Beach. All I got to do is highlight the thumbnail and drag it up to Beach. Now I have four photographs, can you see that in the video? In my beach collection. And as you can see it added that virtual copy right there. So um, as you're submitting photos to iStock Photo, you just submitted 10. You could uh, highlight the 10 you just submitted, drag them up to your collection that says iStock Photo, and um, then you'll keep track of what you sent to iStock Photo. And you didn't move any photos, they're still in their respective folders. So if you went back to your Rome folder, those photos are still there. You didn't move them. It just added them to the collection. So it comes in handy. I mean, there's a zillion ideas you could come up why you might use collections. You might have um, um, photographs that you're going to be sending to a printer and you could put them in a collection. Or maybe you went on vacation and you have various photographs. You have some landscapes and you have you know, pictures that of, of people and you have street shots. You can make separate collections so you could have them all grouped differently. And, and that's why you would um, use collections. Now the last thing uh, you might want to do is make stacks of photos and it's called stacking. And the reason why you do that is let's say you had you went out on a photo shoot and you have 300 photos and they're all across the bottom on the thumbnails here and a lot of them are similar let's uh, for uh, an example I'll use is recently I was shooting some boats and a speedboat is flying by you and you have the motor drive on your camera and you took um, maybe 20 shots of this blue speedboat as it sped by then a red speedboat comes by and you have 20 different shots of this red speedboat and then a yellow one goes by and so similar. So you have all these kind of similar shots but um, and you have 200 of them going across the bottom here and you want to find the best blue one or the best yellow one. It's it's arduous task to go through them all like that. What you could do is you could group the similar ones or you know what a dissimilar if you want 
into a stack. Let's say I'm going to do these first three. So I'm going to click on this one, the first one. I'm going to hold the shift key down and click on the last one in the group. Now it's selected all three. Now what I do is I right click on any of the three and I'm going to go up to stacking and I'm going to write group into a stack. And what Lightroom does now, it it, see how this all went down and it says three right here and it shows a stack like a stack of paper. This is kinda like you had the actual prints and you stacked them on your desk. Um, these three are now stacked. Pretend you know this could be the blue boat and I click on this and it uh, it brings them all out singly and I could click on it again this little one of three and it made them the stack again. So that just helps Maybe you um, keep track of your, you know, it, it's, you know, you had such so many of them down here. It helps you um, make this easier to look at. So you just want to work with the red boat, and you could click on the stack of red boat, and all the yellow boat and blue boat are still in their stacks. So all you have open are the red boat. And so you could just go through and find your best shot of the red boat and develop that one. So that's why you would use stacking. And you could um, right click on it again. You could go up to stacking and you could unstack them if you want when you're done. You could split stack. You could experiment with it. You could do all kinds of things with stacks. I don't use stacking very much, but um, I do if I'm taking, I have the motor drive on and I'm taking a lot of pictures of the same thing and then I take a lot of pictures of another thing and a lot of pictures of a third thing. Then I'll use stacking to group them together so I could um, just gives me a, a handle on what I'm doing a little easier. So that's it. We covered snapshots, collections, stacking, and virtual copies. They're all tools in Lightroom that allow you, I shouldn't say tools, but they're all functions of Lightroom that allow you to um, manipulate your photographs a little easier either by um, finding them, sorting them, or um, putting a place marker in a spot so you could go do other things and come back to that place marker. That's what would be um, snapshots and virtual copies would do for you. So that's it. Um, I appreciate everybody watching and I appreciate everyone who has subscribed to my channel on YouTube. And if you haven't, if you could do that, subscribe to my YouTube channel, I'd really appreciate it. And that's it for now. I'll talk to you guys soon.